scene we have had of uh, the U.S. military operation. This particular scene, uh, this is uh, U.S. troops landing at Old Panama. Difficult to tell whether they're Army or Marines uh, landing at uh, that Old Panama. You can see smoke in the distance. This was just a few hours ago. And this was about uh, two hours ago, Juan Vasquez says. Daylight came and uh, American troops securing uh, roads and bridges. While Panama is a, a small country and uh, Panama City is a comparatively uh, a small city by uh, um, world standards, I want to keep in mind of, of what a, a difficult and very large operation this is. Helicopters uh, just at dawn, as you can see. The U.S. attack uh, began at about midnight uh, last night Eastern time. Uh, early elements of the attack started much earlier than that, but the uh, official mark time for the attack was 1 a.m. Eastern uh, time. The heaviest fighting apparently occurred between 1 and 4 a.m. U.S. time. These pictures taken as uh, daylight came. And uh, those particular helicopters appear to be uh, troop-carrying helicopters. This was in the vicinity, this was on the eastern side of the city, on the vicinity of the Marriott Hotel. And you were... Now this is in... Excuse me, Dan. Please, Juan, go ahead. This is... That was in the general area of... Uh, now, apparently we've lost the picture, but the last pictures we saw were Americans moving into the general area of one of the Panamanian military installations located uh, on the eastern side of the city between the Marriott and the International Airport. Well, one, uh, we may get some more uh, pictures as we are giving our uh, viewers here the, uh, the, the, the raw videotape, raw in the sense that it hasn't been edited as we're able to get it up uh, from the uh, satellite station uh, there in Panama. Now, to review where we are, what we know, what we don't know, what's going on, the preliminary casualty toll, and everyone emphasizes it's early, can be expected to rise, perhaps uh, go up quite a bit, uh, in the U.S. military attack on Manuel Noriega is nine American uh, military personnel killed in action, 39 uh, wounded, one missing. Uh, at least 50 Panamanians are known to be dead. The toll among Panamanians is, uh, is widely believed to be much higher than that. Noriega himself, hunted, remains on the loose. Um, uh, U.S. officials have said that while they believe that Noriega is still inside the country, that they can't be certain of that. Correspondent David Martin is uh, at the Pentagon. David? Dan, watching those uh, pictures with you, uh, they look like troop-carrying helicopters to me, too, although I'm watching on a, on a very small monitor. Um, <clears throat> and the, uh, the planes looked like C-130 trans... We're still trying to uh, come to grips with this. Uh, just a minute. I... Somebody's knocking at the door here. Hold That's on. That's all right, Ed. All right. Fine. All right, uh, we're back. I'm surprised you answered it. <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, hi. All right. We're, uh, we're still trying to make a, a judgment here, so uh, okay. uh, we understand that those uh, forces have uh, left the hotel, but we're trying to confirm that before we, uh, uh, they're around us. We'll let you go ahead and take care of business, and we'll talk a little bit here. I agree with you, Tom. I mean, I, I, go ahead back to your point. Which well, my, which my, make, my point sorry. is that it, uh, it should not come as a rocket to anyone who's been following even casually what has been going on in Panama. It was from that hotel that American journalists were dragged earlier in the year in May when the elections were going on. It is the central place for Westerners and journalists gathered. I'm not talking just about the journalists who are there, but US all the Westerners like who are yes. there, that you would think that that would be a primary objective. And the fact of the matter is that we've been broadcasting for uh, now about uh, 10 hours, about nine hours on this situation. The Marriott, Marriott Hotel has been a target uh, almost every hour during that time. People have been dragged from their rooms. Still no Mar American military presence around them. So it seems to me that there are two fairly, not just fairly, there are two significant intelligence yeah. failures here. Noriega, where was he? And secondly, what about that hotel, which if we're in there to protect American interest, the United States is. There are a lot of Americans there, and they're at great risk, and some of them are being dragged from the hotel right now. I just think it's inexcusable. Katie, are you still with us? 
Bryant. You've been listening to that comment? Well, I was just going to say that I think that uh, Tom is right. There are going to be two major areas of criticism, and the fact that this fairly high-ranking Pentagon official had no explanation for this means there wasn't really a plan or that he knew of uh, some kind of contingency plan to protect these people, which does seem quite unusual. Hmm. All right, Catherine Kirk, we'll be getting back to you also. Thanks very much. Let's go on over to Deborah Norville right now. Well, there may be no answers coming from the Pentagon as to how some of these happened or how some of these apparent omissions uh, were created, but maybe there's some answers at the White House. Jim Kleszewski is standing by there. He's been there since the early hours of the morning. Um, this is nothing new to the Bush administration, the fact that uh, Americans are, are, are at the Marriott Hotel, the fact that it would be a natural target as it has been in the past. Why were no precautions taken? Why were no steps implemented? Why specifically the military didn't take those precautions, uh, I haven't gotten that answer here, Deborah. But, you know, whenever the U.S. enters into a military action like this, uh, the president, before him President Reagan, now President Bush, feels he needs U.S. public support to take that action. What better motive for Americans to support than for the U.S. military to be protecting American lives. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll remember that was the reason that President Reagan cited for going into Grenada in 1983 sure. to rescue those medical students, when in fact, what we wanted to do, the United States wanted to do, was rid Grenada of that communist-leaning government and shut down that airstrip, which the U.S. felt could have been used by uh, the communists. Right, and I think if you go through those four objectives that uh, President Bush outlined this morning, um, while safeguarding the, uh, the Americans, the 35,000 Americans who are in Panama is indeed one of them, uh, also on that list is apprehending Manuel Noriega, and that is probably in reverse order. Right, and no matter what, the, uh, what, what items are on the list, Ousting Noriega was the number one priority of this administration. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there, there is always a risk, and, and it certainly seems to be evident this morning. Anytime you take any kind of, of military action in particular, um, people are going to second-guess your, your decision. Uh, given that fact, shouldn't the United States have had better intelligence? They've acknowledged all along it's been difficult to get information from Panama, but it would seem that... Uh, that they didn't have a clue where Noriega was based on what we heard just a moment ago, that he could have been on the, the Atlantic side, he could have been on the Pacific side. It was a, it was a coin toss, maybe. Well, but as we heard from Noriega's uh, supporters this morning, the U.S. clearly telegraphed its punch. Uh, after Noriega made this declaration of war last Friday, the response from the administration was, well, they treated it with uh, uh, humor, actually. Uh, there was somewhat of a humorous response here. One official at the White House called uh, Noriega and Panama the mouse that roared, for example. Uh, then this for the purpose of getting him some sleep. He has only one event on his public schedule that uh, is going to be held, and that's a photograph, I think, not a photo opportunity with uh, uh, some aid to Poland uh, group. And the rest of the time, I think he'll be standing by awaiting word from uh, from Panama on what is uh, on what is happening there. Uh, as we've talked about earlier in political terms, it does strike me that uh, if the overall assessment that was given us this morning by General Powell uh, holds up, that uh, he's not going to be in much in, in very great difficulty. The question, of course, is will it hold up? The overall assessment, of course, being clouded at the moment by this, uh, by this uh, taking of Americans uh, by independent members of, of the, uh, the brigades. Um, is there a sense anywhere that you can tell that this is the kind of thing that would compromise the whole operation? Doesn't sound like it, does it? It doesn't, uh, Peter, and you'll recall, I, I'm sure that uh, General Powell was asked about this whole matter of hostages, and he said that they were doing everything they could, everything they could to chase that down. And if I'm not mistaken, he also said that he felt that we had sufficient force present to deal with that. And it appears from all accounts that we certainly do have sufficient force, uh, roughly triple, at least triple, the number of uh, soldiers on the ground that the, that the PDF could mount. I can't imagine that this, uh, that this, uh, the, these uh, uh, Dignity Battalion uh, uh, figures amount to very many people. Okay. Britt, thanks very much indeed. Uh, Britt Hume, John McCarthy in Washington. Just to uh, briefly review, we do not know where General... Now, somebody wishes to speak to me in my ear, so go ahead. Okay, what we can do is now go back and review uh, a portion of the President's not very extensive remarks he made from the Oval Office uh, today about his assessment of the operation as he saw it about an hour and a half ago. That was enough. 
General Noriega's reckless threats and attacks upon Americans in Panama created an imminent danger to the 35,000 American citizens in Panama. As president, I have no higher obligation than to safeguard the lives of American citizens. And that is why I directed our armed forces to protect the lives of American citizens in Panama and to bring General Noriega to justice in the United States. Let us, uh, now that we feel uh, not uh, comfortable, but better able to report that one of the two Americans, uh, actually the two Americans who have been taken from the hotel a short while ago are both uh, television producers, John Meyerson, who works for CBS, and Robert Campos, who works for ABC, along with John Quinones. Let's go back to the hotel now and ask uh, John Quinones if you can give us some more details, John, of what happened. John Quinones? I'm sorry, Peter, I, I did not hear that. I'm sorry, I, could I ask you if you could give us a few more details of what happened to Bob Campos and John Meyerson? They were downstairs in the lobby. They just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. We were uh, trying to, uh, to dis we were discussing feeding videotape out of Panama back to New York. Uh, we just got our satellite up, as your video shows, and uh, they were uh, about to leave the hotel uh, to feed that vid more videotape to New York. Suddenly, uh, a truckload of about four or five of uh, these men uh, showed up fully armed. They uh, they were shouting that uh, too many uh, Panamanians have been innocently uh, killed by Americans, and they just wanted uh, they they wanted to take more Americans out of here. Clearly, uh, there is a great deal of anger here that uh, that this hotel, such a prime target for these battalions, is. Uh, so poorly protected. Uh, we have not seen any American troops uh, within blocks of the Marriott. Well, that's ex precisely the point I wanted to try to establish, because John McCrethy was under the impression in Washington that because the Marines had been landed in your general vicinity, some of them clearly, if we can look at the map, clearly on their way to the American Embassy, which is about a mile from where you are, we're going to take up positions around the Marriott Hotel. How many foreigners are there in there, and is there nobody around the hotel at the moment? There's about 200 of us here, and uh, no, no, the only, the only, uh, the only armed men we see around the hotel are, are those uh, members of the Dignity Battalion, and there, there are uh, they, throughout the the, uh, the neighborhood, uh, driving by and then uh, uh, breaking, uh, breaking into the hotel lobby, and then uh, and then leaving just as quickly as they arrive. So we're looking at again at the video of the forces being landed. Uh, uh, by these uh, troop-carrying helicopters. Were they on their way to the embassy? Am I correct about that? Were the, uh, the soldiers, the American soldiers? Yes. Uh, yes. We have now eight, uh, a total of eight tanks that have uh, surrounded the American tanks that are protecting the U.S. embassy. Uh, that is one direction they flew in. Another contingency of helicopters flew south where they landed on a beachhead and... Uh, and uh, pursued another group of Dignity Battalions. So there was some some fighting between both sides there. But that was just, that was about three hours ago. It is ironic, uh, it, it, because, you know, in, in, in all, the, so much, often in these combat situations, a hotel uh, becomes a, a place for the foreigners. The Commodore Hotel in Beirut was famous, the Sheridan Hotel in Dhaka in Bangladesh when the Civil War was going on there. Now you've got this situation of 200 foreigners. Who are they? A lot of businessmen, uh, a group of businessmen were here, and most of the rest are, are journalists who had uh, flown here over the last week. And of course you've had uh, trouble in the past from the Noriega regime, those of you who are journalists. He's never been a fan, has he? No, not at all. John, reflect uh, for a moment, and it's very difficult for you because you and Bob Campos work very quickly together. We all have... You know, our fingers crossed that General Powell was correct when he said that uh, uh, the military was in a position to deal with all of the hostages situation. I'll check my notes to see precisely that is what he said. But give us your thoughts on the overall uh, situation now and how you think in time, in the next couple of days, this, in, this intervention uh, will go down with the Panamanian people. Well, clearly there is... Uh there is uh, a great deal, uh, in fact, we had... And the uh, OAS, uh, Organization of American States, meets uh, this morning at 10.30.
long before they meet, a collective sigh of relief has occurred as each of those countries realizes the Panama Canal is safe and their commerce can proceed through in a way that they really could not have predicted necessarily. The, the greater the uh, political opposi opposition will be. But I think what we have to do is to maintain stability as well. We cannot simply go in and then pull back and, uh, and leave uh, the forces uh, without a measure of stability. So I think that as soon as we can, but only as responsibly as we can. Uh, are you concerned that we haven't really heard this morning uh, any reaction from anyone within the Organization of American States or any other Central American leader like Oscar Arias? Well, I think they're waiting, uh, frankly, to, to see how this unfolds. Uh, the uh, president has worked very closely. To uh, we'll go back over to the uh, sofa area with Brian and Tom. All right, Jane, thanks mm -hmm. very much. Uh, since, uh, since you started that discussion, we can tell you we've just gotten word that Ed Rabel has left the Marriott safely, we assume, and so either that position is now secure or those PDF forces have left the building or Ed found another way out. But we understand that Dennis Murphy, our NBC News correspondent in London, who was based in Panama for a time, can help us out a little bit on the logistics here. Dennis, what do you have to add? Well, Brian, let me just say, as somebody who spent a lot of hours at the Marriott Hotel over the past few years, I think we should point out something, and that is that there is a general aviation airfield about a quarter mile from the front door of the Marriott Hotel. It's probably a 5,000-foot runway, and I would imagine that the Panamanian forces would want to have secured that. I haven't heard anything about the, the status of, the, uh, of that airfield, but I would just put in for my two cents that the Marriott may not be an easy target strategically because that airfield is almost on their front door. Strategically, you mean for U.S. forces is what you're saying? To get to, yeah, sure, to get the Rangers up there. Okay. Mm -hmm. But again, this, this, this may wind up being, I don't, I don't want to say much ado about nothing because some people were taken, but we, we have obviously uh, presented a situation that was threatening to, to uh, the people in the Marriott. That situation uh, now seems to be less threatening than it was a uh, half hour ago when we, when we embarked on this discussion, certainly not for those people who are currently being held or were taken. We don't know if they're, they're still being held. Well, and in fairness as well, journalists are always at risk when they're in these kinds of situations. It comes with the occupation and the others who were there during a time of uh, great danger and great tension were there a little bit at their own risk as well. Yeah. I mean, if you're a businessman or a tourist in Panama over the last week or so, you knew that you were at, uh, going into, well, if not the mouth of the volcano, you were playing around the edges of fire. Anyway. Yeah. We, we said a little bit earlier that uh, when Martin Fitzwater, the uh, White House spokesman, first came down to the uh, White House briefing room to uh, not announce that they had executed this pre-planned mission, there were four reasons given for that. One, to protect U.S. lives. Two, to preserve the integrity of the canal. Three, to restore the democratic process in Panama. And four, to apprehend General Noriega. Brian Ross, NBC News correspondent, joins us now with perhaps a fifth reason, and this one uh, a little more unusual. Right? Under, underlying all these reasons was intelligence that apparently was given to the president uh, over the weekend that uh, Noriega's drinking had become uh, worse than ever. Uh, he'd been always a terrible drinker, but now he's drinking terribly. And there was a certain mental deterioration, and the intelligence was picking up uh, information that what Noriega had in mind as his salvation was to create almost a second Tehran, to take uh, a select group of American hostages and hold them and hold back any uh, American efforts to go after him. And to close down the canal at the same time, yes, I think right. was, that yes. was some of the thinking yes. that uh, the intelligence was picking that up. That he had really sort of started to go off the deep end, and it was going to be out of uh, a situation out of control, uh, and that was one reason for the urgency in moving. We understand John Dancy is at the State Department has something to add to this, too. John? Uh, Brian, uh, let me just say that there's been no word from the State Department on the matter that you were discussing before, which is why the Marriott Hotel had not been secured earlier. But I think that the State Department people would defend themselves by saying, look, we put out travel advisories for the past year telling Americans not to travel to uh, Panama. Here's the latest one. This was put out just 20 days ago, the 30th of November. The Department of State warns U.S. citizens not to travel to Panama until further notice. The extremely unsettled conditions and the Noriega regime's 1989 announcement in the name of the General State Council that Panama will not be able to answer for the security of U.S. citizens or interests inside or outside Panama has added to existing tensions. And the uh, warning goes on to say there is also a potential for localized breakdowns of law and order due to the activities of the irregular forces known as Dignity Battalions, including their vigorous promotion of anti-U.S. sentiment. So the State Department has warned American citizens for some time not to be in Panama. And as you said, Tom, of course, journalists uh, take those risks uh, routinely, but uh, American businessmen at least knew that there was a travel advisory not to go to Panama when they went there. 
Scott, any, any information on your end about just how many Westerners, Americans, might be being held right now? No, Brian, I've only heard the figures that uh, you've used, 62, I think. And can you tell us about the diplomatic activity that is underway in the State Department, uh, John, uh, especially with the Central American countries and in those areas where we may uh, expect some crossfire from them diplomatically? We know that Ortega is going to take a shot at the United States in a rhetorical way. Castro obviously will, but what about Costa Rica? and Guatemala and Honduras and uh, Salvador in those countries. Well, the, the United States, of course, will have to answer for this action before the Organization of American States. That meeting is uh, scheduled to take place within the hour. There is also a meeting at the UN Security Council. Now, that, uh, that meeting of the Security Council was called by Nicaragua. Nicaragua, earlier today, put its forces on maximum alert because of the U.S. action in Panama. So uh, we can expect to take some, uh, some broadsides from Nicaragua mm -hmm. and perhaps other countries uh, because of that. Of course, Daniel Ortega has preached for a long time that the U.S. was about to invade Managua, so that doesn't, that doesn't surprise us a whole lot. If anything, no. it, it kind of plays directly into his hand. But, Dancy, thanks very much. Um, Brian, let's get back a little bit to, to your point in the alcohol. You said U.S. intelligence passed that along. Um, how much faith do we put in that these days? Uh, that information. I know the American character and I know the Panamanian people. Uh, we have much more in common than we have in differences and we will resolve our differences. I think as the Americans learn to treat Panamanians with respect and uh, view us as partners in the Panama Canal, some type of uh, solid working relationship will be developed and will continue. Sounds Panamanians good. like Americans. We uh, respect your democratic system and uh, we will... ...side over longer than anyone Because his worst expected. enemies still do applaud Noriega's instinct. Yeah, I mean, for survival like, oh, against sure. the U.S., yes, well, of course, and he's, uh, he's been crafty throughout his relationship with the United States uh, and prepared to be a double dealer for a long time. He is that. Let's um, back up a little bit in case you're, you're joining us as this morning goes along, the morning um, that uh, started on this news front at about uh, 1 o'clock when uh, the U.S. began to execute a series of pre-planned missions against the Panamanian Defense Forces of General Manuel Noriega. And if you weren't with us, the president went on uh, national television at 7.20 this morning with a brief address to the nation of about six minutes. We have a brief soundbite from that address talking about the action taken against Panama and why. General Noriega's reckless threats and attacks upon Americans in Panama created an imminent danger to the 35,000 American citizens in Panama. As president, I have no higher obligation than to safeguard the lives of American citizens. And that is why I directed our armed forces to protect the lives of American citizens in Panama and to bring General Noriega to justice in the United States. I contacted the bipartisan leadership of Congress last night and informed them of this decision. And after taking this action, I also talked with leaders in Latin America, the Caribbean, and uh, those of other U.S. allies. That was President Bush on national television uh, a little more than uh, two and a half hours ago. Since then, we have been following events in Panama. If you're just joining us, let's uh, bring you up to date on, on where we stand. Uh, according to the Pentagon, nine U.S. soldiers died in, uh, in the mission so far, 39 wounded, one missing, several aircraft damage. We still have no word on Panamanian casualties. As for the number of uh, U.S. troops involved, about uh, 12,000 more were introduced to Panama to beef up this action. We do not know to what extent the Panamanian defense uh, forces co-opted with U.S. forces. And uh, according to uh, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Colin Powell, the uh, U.S. forces are now into what he called stability operations. In other words, uh, the mission was a success. He declared it a success because it removed the head of the Noriega government, although he has not been apprehended. The man who is on the run is uh, General Noriega, and Brian Ross has been a student of him for some time. Tell us about this latest intelligence report. Let's expand on that as some if we can, that he was drinking heavily and that what the people around him, can he count on them now? He can count on a few uh, loyal uh, followers. Uh, in particular, he has a former Israeli um, high-ranking military officer, Michael Harari, who became the station chief for the Israeli Secret Service in S Central America, out of Mexico City, became close to Noriega, and then actually uh, almost uh, became part of the Noriega government. At one point, he was appointed uh, honorary consul to uh, uh, Israel on behalf of the Panamanian government, as, an as a Panamanian diplomat almost. But he has provided uh, much of the training and the background for the elite forces who guard uh, Noriega. And Harari has helped Noriega invest his money. 
It was Harare who helped introduce him to some of the Medellin uh, cocaine uh, cartel people. And Harare does a lot of the thinking for him. And Harare, uh, by all accounts, is a very, uh, very sharp uh, player. He was, in fact, the, um, one of the men who tracked down the terrorists from the 1972 Munich Olympics for the Israeli Mossad. And he was uh, drummed out of there or moved to Central America after he mistakenly killed a, a waiter who he thought was one of the terrorists but was not. But he has a long background in history in dealing with uh, intelligence and, and that secret world. But, Brian, we keep on talking about how much trouble uh, Noriega might be if he is not apprehended and, in fact, chooses to stay in the country. How loyal are those people to him? And how much trouble could he make? Are they loyal to Noriega or only loyal to the power that he wields? I think, for the most part, uh, loyal to the power that he wields. His power, his, uh, loyal, loyalty to him is not that deep. It's very wide, but it's not that deep. Uh, Gene Meserve uh, has uh, perhaps some of the most valued information of the day um, because there are Americans in Panama and American servicemen have died in this intervention. Gene, and you've got a number or numbers where people can call for information. That's right, Peter. This is about the only information the State Department has today, but let me give you those phone numbers. There are about 24,000 civilians down in Panama, and if a family member wants to find out uh, what might have happened to them, there is a phone number uh, in Washington, area code code 202-647-7310. And of course, as you know, huge numbers of military personnel down there as well. Um, there are various numbers depending on which service you are concerned with. For the Air Force, if you are calling from outside the state of Texas, the number is 1-800-531-5501. If you're inside Texas, it's 800-292-5642. Now looking at the Navy, if you're calling from outside the state of Virginia, the number is 800-523-2975. If you are in Virginia, the number is 800-572-2126. And now the Army phone numbers, again, outside the state of Virginia, 1-800-233-5259. And if you are calling from inside the state of Virginia, the number is 800-468. 7786. And finally, the Marine telephone number, there is only one in this instance. It is in Washington, area code 202-694-1492. If you call those numbers, there should be personnel on hand that can give you some sense of what might have happened to your family or loved ones. Peter? Okay, Gene, thanks very much. Please don't go far away, and we will put those numbers up uh, from time to time. As Gene points out, a lot of Americans in Panama, 20,000 civilians, and in that first briefing at the Pentagon this morning, one of the things made very clear, uh, <coughs> excuse me, was that when the U.S. descended, I beg your pardon, <coughs> that was when the U.S. descended, when this operation began eight hours and three minutes ago, uh, one of the very first operations uh, was to secure those areas of Panama where Americans are living. And we'll review that operation in just a short while ago. The Panama Canal, as we mentioned, is closed the first time in its 75-year history. Talk about how things uh, travel around the world in a hurry, at least news. Uh, not only did the canal close a short while ago, but the price of oil, world oil, uh, on world markets was already going up. Uh, there is nothing more sensitive politically than the world oil market, and if you were not able to ship oil uh, through the Panama Canal, you'll have to ship it around the bottom of South America, and therefore it will be more expensive, and therefore some people somewhere in the world will be paying more for their oil. But if you take a look at these various locks here, you'll see why one of the one of the things the United States did first was to try to secure the canal because it does not take much to disrupt it. There were rumors, as there are always rumors in a situation like this, that one of the things that General Noriega's loyalists might try to do would be to sink a ship in the canal. Well, take a look at it. You can see how narrow it is and how devastating it would be and how easy it might be to mine one of those ships and sink it in the middle of the canal it would cause havoc with that shipping, even though uh, the Panama Canal is less uh, valuable militarily and economically to the United States now than it has been in almost all of its 75-year history. Um, we did a short while ago, just in case you joined us, it's 10 o'clock, a little after 10 o'clock Eastern Time, just received the first video from Panama a few minutes ago. Here's a brief look of the International Airport uh, 
which the 82nd Airborne, if my memory serves me correctly, was the unit which landed on the airport. They secured the airport. They wanted to disable any aircraft uh, which the Panamanians could use against them, which were not very many, only helicopters in most cases, but also, as uh, the Pentagon told us this morning, wanted to secure any aircraft that any members of the Panamanian establishment opposed to the American intervention might use for a getaway, which raises the whole question as we look at some of these pictures, where is General Noriega? The answer is nobody knows. This is the lobby of the Marriott Hotel, the ill-secured Marriott Hotel, according to John Quinones, who is in the hotel at the moment, where they've had a long, they've had a couple of incursions this evening by members of these so-called Dignity Brigades, and it has been a very tough night for uh, foreigners there. Can't identify this much for you, except to say that may or may not be an American patrol boat off the coast, but if it was Panamanian, we also know that the Pentagon said that the U.S. military moved very quickly uh, to nullify, I believe they said, the capabilities of any uh, seagoing Panamanian operation, which means basically somebody blew up the boats. And these are some of the C-141s which flew from Fort Bragg in North Carolina and from Travis Air Force Base in California, carrying in the 82nd Airborne and various infantry brigades, uh, military police brigades, and the 193rd Infantry, the 82nd Airborne. And they divided basically into a variety of task forces covering various areas of the country, from the Caribbean side of Panama to the Pacific side, and from the north to south, uh, from Costa Rica in the north down to Colombia. And everything we can tell so far is that in military terms, when it comes to dealing with the Panamanian Defense Forces, the operation has been pretty much as successful as they had hoped for. There is this there is this extremely difficult situation of the hostages. But there you get a little inclination, a little indication of what it looked like early today as Americans landed in Panama, in that case in Panama City. John Quinones, you told us a while ago that many Panamanians greeted uh, the Americans enthusiastically. Absolutely, Peter. Uh, those choppers uh, landed in some mud there on the beach, and as the uh, American Marines, about 50 of them, were uh, jumping out of their choppers, they got stuck in the mud, and uh, uh, Panamanians came to the rescue. It was an incredible sight. Uh, ropes were brought in, and they were pulled out, and as they were pulled out, uh, these uh, Marines uh, then proceeded to chase uh, some of the, uh, the Panamanian troops that were still firing at them, and, and the fighting continued. Uh, with a little help for the Americans from the Panamanians. I should mention to you, Peter, that uh, the, uh, the Mexican government has decided to uh, come to the rescue of its citizens staying at, at this hotel. Uh, when told that its people are imperiled here, uh, the Mexican embassy uh, decided to send, uh, to send some transportation for uh, all Mexican uh, citizens uh, to be taken to the, uh, to the Mexican embassy here in Panama for protection. Uh, my concern is that these Dignity Battalions are now much angrier because they've lost all ground to the American invading troops. And that uh, unlike uh, earlier this morning when they came here with a message and took us up to the first floor, kept us under very careful watch with their guns, at one point one of them pointed his AK-47 at my head. and uh, made some trigger-pulling sounds. At another point, he stuck it up against my teeth and said, a lot of Panamanians have died. Don't believe for a moment. I won't kill you. Now, uh, first pictures are in uh, of the attack on uh, Panama and if, uh, to CBS News. And if you haven't seen those, we'll be showing those to you as the morning goes along. President Bush was up uh, almost all night as the attack was launched, uh, monitoring events in Panama. Vice President Quayle was with him for at least a while. The White House seemed to make a point of uh, announcing that. And uh, then later this morning, uh, President Bush went on television to discuss the military action, primarily his reasons for taking it. CBS News White House correspondent Wyatt Andrews is standing by now there on Pennsylvania Avenue. Wyatt? 
Dan, good morning again. The, the president's uh, broad justification uh, for sending troops after Noriega in boils down to he, the fact that he had had it with Noriega. That he said, beginning with the declaration of a state of war declared by Noriega last Friday and culminating with the specific threats against Americans over the weekend, the death of the U.S. Marine, that that put all Americans in Panama in imminent danger, the president said. And because of that, he said he had no choice but to send troops to try to remove Noriega by force. For nearly two years, the United States, the nations of Latin America and the Caribbean have worked together to resolve the crisis in Panama. The goals of the United States have been to safeguard the lives of Americans, to defend democracy in Panama, to combat drug trafficking, and to protect the integrity of the Panama Canal Treaty. Many attempts have been made to resolve this crisis through diplomacy, and negotiations. All were rejected by the dictator of Panama, General Manuel Noriega. As for events here at the White House today, Dan, the president is staying in the Oval Office and it will continue to monitor events in Panama. Most of his public schedule today has been canceled. Uh, on the big picture, we should point out, the president stressed in his speech this morning that he thought the major objectives uh, of the military invasion today had been achieved, namely that the uh, government that had been elected by the Panamanian people last May had been installed in office and that he moved therefore very quickly to lift the economic sanctions against Panama in an effort to prove to the Panamanian people that the U.S. wanted things to return to normal quickly. Having said that, the White House nor the Pentagon is making any claim that uh, things have completely returned to normal, that the danger to Americans uh, has been eliminated. That has particular sharp relevance given these continuing reports that hostages are being taken. And there has been no explanation, Dan, uh, really from the President or from uh, General Powell over at the Pentagon as to why, despite uh, the weeks of contingency planning and the two days of specific planning, they missed Noriega. Uh, General Powell emphasizing, as uh, he acknowledges they'd missed Noriega so far, uh, that uh, it was still in the early stages, as he put it. Uh, thanks, Wyatt. It's impossible to list all of the U.S. military units involved in the attack and the continuing fighting in Panama, but they include elements of the 82nd uh, Airborne. Uh, there were a number of uh, parachute drops. Uh, this is some of the footage, the first footage in uh, this morning. Uh, these were aircraft uh, flying uh, over Panama City, giving themselves a wide arc uh, to uh, see virtually the whole city below them. Uh, elements of the 82nd Airborne were dropped. Ranger battalions were uh, at least one was dropped. Special Forces, 193rd Infantry Brigade, uh, a Marine, uh, several Marine operations took place. Uh, the 7th uh, infantry Brigade from Fort Ord, California was involved, as was the 5th Infantry Brigade from Fort Polk, uh, Louisiana, as were a number of military police uh, operations, including support groups from the Navy and the United States Air Force, all involved as American troops backed by fighter jets and waves of U.S.-based reinforcements attacked Panamanian Army bases today, trying to do, uh, in a massive bid, trying to capture General Noriega and break his defiant grip on power. They have broken his grip on power. They did not, at least not yet, have they captured Noriega. Now, we'll keep you posted on events as they develop during the day. Right now, let's get caught up on some of the rest of the day's news with Charlie Osgood. Charlie? Thank you, Dan. Some of the other things going on in the world are these. Federal investigators say this morning that four bombs sent to various locations in the South were virtually identical and all were mailed from Georgia. The latest bomb was removed from an NAACP office in Jacksonville, Florida. A similar device was found in an Atlanta courthouse and two... As the story unfolds, the Panamanian people, uh, as I said, celebrating the freedom from the dictator that has been removed from Panama this morning. How long is this operation going to take? When's it going to be over? Well, Your best of, guess? No effort like this is ever engaged in without uh, the, all contingencies being considered. It could go for a number of days. I suppose it could go for a few weeks. Uh, I think the objective of removing a dictator from power restoring the democracy was the first mark of success. Uh, capturing the fugitive from justice, uh, Mr. Noriega, is something that uh, is going to take time. I'm sure uh, the American troops that are there and the men and women who are serving in the armed forces are going to be dedicated to that, as are the Panamanians who are now in power. Well, Craig Fuller, uh, then Chief of Staff for then Vice President George Bush in Washington, our thanks to you for sharing Thank your you. thoughts with us. And uh, now let's switch it over to Jane. 
with uh, Virginia Senator John Warner, who joins us now. Uh, Senator, perhaps you heard Craig Fuller speculating that the operation could go on for some weeks. Will there be a special session of Congress called to deal with this? Uh, I spoke with the leadership this morning. Um, very brief consideration was given to that. There's no intention at this time by the president or the leadership to have a special session of Congress. Uh, I think the president, uh, yeah. in a very prompt and efficient way, notified the Congress. Uh, I had direct access to the Secretary of Defense uh, from the very beginning of this uh, military operation. And I think that our troops uh, have handled themselves in a very professional manner. Would you elaborate a little bit about the uh, decision making, albeit brief, uh, that uh, led you to conclude with the leadership that there need be no special session of Congress? I think that best uh, come from the leadership. Um, Congress at the present time, as you know, is in recess. And um, we don't need to authorize any additional funds at this point in time. There's certainly no inclination to declare war. In my judgment, by the time Congress got home, or well, that is, got back to Washington from their homes, uh, this operation would have been concluded and hopefully our troops withdrawn. You've been fielding uh, questions over the War Powers Act uh, through the Reagan administration. Yes. Uh, does the War Powers Act apply in this case? And if not, why not? The War Powers Act uh, would apply, there's no question about it, but each president, including President Bush, complies with the spirit and not the letter. I personally think it's an unconstitutional law, but nevertheless, uh, the presidents have complied with the spirit. And today at one o'clock, uh, the Senate, that is those members in Washington, will be thoroughly briefed. Um, we're watching, as you speak, uh, um, unedited, uh, frankly, unpreviewed uh, footage from Panama of uh, American GIs in full battle gear, even as you say that we are not in a, a state of war. Or did I misunderstand? Did you say we're not in a state of war or that war was not declared? How did you put it? Listen, that war is how you wish to define it. For those young men down there in that picture, it's war. There's no doubt about it. But I said simply that there's no inclination now for the Congress to be brought back to Washington to declare war. I think that it should not be done. At what point can we uh, declare victory, Senator? Well, that's entirely up to the president. Uh, he has command of the troops and the facts, and that's a judgment he'll have to render. But I think there's strong bipartisan support in the Congress at this very moment for the actions that our president has taken to achieve the primary goals, one, of protecting American citizens, and two, allowing a legitimately elected government to take power. You, uh, I know, have spoken with Senator Dole, but your reference to strong bipartisan support. Uh, who have you talked to on the Democratic side? Well, I think uh, if you'll check your wires, uh, the majority leader, Mitchell, has issued a statement just minutes ago uh, supporting the actions by the administration. Um, on the, uh, 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 the, the score of, uh, we've known military casualties, as, as Deborah said, it's known now that uh, at least nine soldiers yes. died. And that's most regrettable. Uh, of course it is. <laughs> Do you have any way of knowing uh, how many American civilians at, at this moment are unaccounted for? Uh, we do not. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I will be in my office through the morning working with my staff, again, in a supportive way of what our chief executive and commander-in-chief, President Bush, the actions he's taken. You um, are, are expected in a uh, briefing in Washington uh, for senators at 1 p.m. If uh, se the Senate is in recess, how many of you are in town? Well, there's quite a few of us in town. Uh, we rotate back and forth depending on our duties. The Armed Services Committee had a hearing yesterday, and a number of senators were present. When were you briefed on the actions uh, uh, that were, were about to be taken or had been taken, The Senator? Department of Defense briefed me uh, almost within 15 minutes uh, following the... Uh, decision to go forward and have our troops uh, take charge. We just heard on this tape that we all are watching for the first time together, well, gunfire. And obviously, uh, this is daylight footage now, so we're seeing, I take it, what must be some of the mopping up uh, operations that uh, Colin Powell referred to in his briefing. Do you have any way of knowing uh, what kind of resistance uh, our troops there are encountering even now, Senator? Uh, I do not, uh, Jane. As you know, I'm here in your Washington studios, and at the present time, my source of information is your source. What a scary thought that is, Senator. Oh, well, I, we, no, we... I think our government has worked well and coordinated well. So um, I'm confident that the American people will rally behind our president. All right, Senator. Well, we thank you for thank being you. with us today.
and uh, turn it back over to Bryant Gumbel. All right, Jane, thanks very much. As we continue to, um, to watch this footage, and we're seeing it for the first time as you are, footage shot earlier of the uh, military action in Panama. We are joined in here in studio by Ambassador Carlos Jose Gutierrez of Costa Rica, the Costa Rican ambassador to the United States, and of course Central no, United Nations. I'm sorry, United Nations. Uh, of course, uh, Central American reaction to this action is of primary importance. And good morning, Mr. Ambassador. Good morning. What is your reaction to the um, to the U.S. effort? I would put it this way: as a Latin American, I dislike seeing the United States intervening military. In, Latin, in any Latin American country. That takes us back to before 1932. On the other hand, the Panamanian Assembly on Friday declared the existence of a state of war between the United States and Panama. So that gives you some ground, some legal ground, for the action taken in Panama. Our government, the government of Costa Rica, has been very critical of the situation in Panama, and especially the measures of dictatorship taken by General Noriega in the last time. And we did our best effort to get an action from the Organization of American States, which unfortunately was not strong enough. We will have feel better if the action against Noriega would have been an action taken through the Organization of American States. But since the Panamanian Assembly declared the existence of a state of war with the United States, I think the U.R. government was entitled to the action that is being taken. You're speaking a little bit of legalese to me. You're saying that there was... I am a, a lawyer. I understand that. You're, you're, <laughs> you're telling me there was legal justification for the action taken against Panama. Do you think the action was warranted? I think it was very important that any decision in the Panama situation will take place during the month of December. On January the 1st, the president of the board of control or board of directors of the Panama Canal uh, company is to be is supposed to be a Panamanian. Correct. And I understand. I have followed the situation and feel that the, that after January the first, the situation will be more complicated, more difficult than it is now. Mr. Ambassador, I'm going to interrupt just a little bit just to note that we're, we're continue to run some footage as it comes in because this is all new to us. Right. We, we have not seen it, and this was shot a little bit earlier. I think you can see some of the mortar fire there at night. We can continue our conversation nonetheless. Let me ask you this. Do you agree with the President that Americans were in imminent danger and that necessitated U.S. military intervention? Looking to the incidents in the last few days, I think it was true. It, 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 that there was danger for any Americans, and especially considering two armed forces, form of young people, uh, uh, coexisting in tension it, in the same place. There is no question that the incidents w were going to continue any time. To what extent are Latin American people going to view this as yet another instance of Yankee imperialism south of the border? Well, it's very difficult to guess right now so soon. My idea is that in the case of Panama, by the indictment of General Noriega in the drug situation, and by the annulment of the Panamanian election, presidential elections that took place in a, a, a few months ago, the situation will be, let's say, less criticized than it will be in another uh, uh, different situation. In order for the operation to be declared a success in your mind, need the U.S. apprehend Noriega, or is it enough to remove him from government? I think it is enough to remove him from government. 
the other matter, apprehend uh, General Noriega and submit him to American justice, well, that's a matter that doesn't really concern the political situation. It doesn't. You don't view him as a destabilizing force unless he's apprehended but forced from power. No, in the sense that once he's out of force, uh, once he is out of control of the armed forces of Panama, I believe he is very unpopular in his own country, and I don't see him as exercising a very important political role. At this point, Mr. Ambassador, to wrap this up, you, you are, it seems, mildly applauding or approving of the U.S. action, thinking it warranted. Might your opinion change drastically if U.S. troops are still there some time from now? Well, I hope that the action takes the U.S. military as short a time as possible and that the reestablishment of Panamanian democracy is done as soon as it can be and the continuation of the Torrijos Carter treaties is unaffected by the situation. Mr. Ambassador Carlos Jose Gutierrez, thank you very much, sir. Pleasure. Thank you, thank you for being with us. We're going to go to Washington right now where we are joined by Juan Sosa, former Panamanian ambassador to the United States. Mr. Ambassador, are you with me? Good morning. Morning. What can you tell us? What's your reaction to this? Uh, it's mixed feelings uh, in the sense that, uh, first of all, uh, I think that we can see what is happening so that we, and of course you at home, have some sense of what uh, the president has ordered the military to do. Is it a reasonable, accurate assessment, John McCarthy? Yes, Peter. They've activated it several times. Uh, reporters went to, to the Persian Gulf uh, with American forces. They went to Honduras when American forces deployed down there. Uh, it has worked fairly successfully thus far, and we're starting to get our first uh, information back from them. It is not the most natural of relationships, the military and the press. It grows to a large extent out of uh, a difficult relationship uh, in Vietnam, in which uh, many American men and women who served in Vietnam in the military believe, still many of them believe, contributed to American defeat there. There you see some people in Panama moving, but again, uh, this is, uh, dare I say it, the danger of, uh, of bringing raw video, but that's the kind of circumstance we're forced into at the moment, because we cannot tell you precisely what it is. But I hope by telling you, uh, we don't uh, put ourselves in the position of misleading you. The operation has been going on for about nine and a half hours, and U.S. forces have landed all over Panama. They have secured all of their primary objectives. The first phase of the operation, so the Pentagon says, is over. Um, there hasn't been an enormous political reaction in Washington. In part, this is because the Congress is on Christmas recess. Though we have heard from a couple of congressmen, uh, Robert Torricelli, the Democrat from New Jersey, came on and said in his view the president should be supported. Chris Dodd, the Democrat from Connecticut, both of whom serve on foreign affairs subcommittees dealing with Latin America, uh, believe there is broad support for the president. We have heard, and it's a minority this morning, um, that the president has seized an opportunity to do something in Panama that he and the Reagan administration before him had wanted to do and has, has really taken the events of last weekend, the declaration of war on the United States, the uh, declaration by General Noriega that he was a maximum leader and turned it on its head when, when General Noriega said that over the weekend and the parliament or the Congress declared war on America. The administration did say these were merely insignificant words. Now, today, in to some degree, to justify the position which the president has taken, these words are now used as having been inflammatory. It is also true, however, that over the weekend, the tension level between the U.S. and Panama rose significantly uh, with the death of uh, one American serviceman um, and the brief detainment uh, and abuse of another and the sexual abuse, verbal abuse, I hasten to add, of one U.S. serviceman's wife. And then a Panamanian military policeman was shot by a plainclothes member of the American Armed Services, uh, carrying, as it turned out, an unauthorized weapon. So all of the circumstances were right. And if you look at the polls and you listen to the politicians, as we in journalism do, it is not hard to detect that there is very broad support uh, in the country to deal with a man who is, among other things, under indictment in the United States 
on drug trafficking charges. I think we can now also go to Washington to listen for the moment while we're looking at these pictures to the opinions of, well, these are, I'm told, Noriega's headquarters. Again, that's uh, somewhat misleading because as, uh, as, we've, as we've said repeatedly in the last several hours, he's the kind of man who moves as many as four or four, five times a night. He knew this was coming. We talked earlier to one of his lawyers, his lawyer in Miami, who talked to him only yesterday. There you see an exchange of fire. And General Noriega knew this was in the works and may have known that it was in the works uh, within days. He's an extremely callous, wily, smart, um, devious uh, politician come soldier or soldier come politician. So anybody who expected that they would go and find General Noriega at his headquarters uh, probably had a surprise coming. But when they talked about the fires, it was at the PDF headquarters, the Panamanian Defense Force headquarters at one end of Panama City. And there you see uh, the best example we have seen in the early video coming from Panama of the kind of considerable destruction uh, which uh, the U.S. military says it has inflicted on various Panamanian Defense Force installations. Some PDF fighting fairly vigorously, particularly here we are told, some PDF elements simply not fighting at all and fading away either because they were anti-Noriega, fading away because they didn't want to mix it up with a very superior U.S. force, uh, fading away perhaps as there has been considerable speculation to fight another day. What I'd like to know from our control room is whether Noel Cook is available to listen to in Washington. He is not, would you tell me when he is? But while we're looking at these pictures, um, we, can also, we can also talk to Jim Laurie, um, our bureau chief in Moscow. Uh, Jim, someone raised the interesting thought today for you to comment on, which is if the United States can be doing this in Panama, why should the Soviet Union not be doing it in Romania, uh, where the government of Nikolai Ceausescu is showing the most repressive tendencies this week? Well, Peter, the Soviets clearly show no inclination to do anything in Romania. They have never got along very well anyway with that uh, country. And in fact, at this time, there are very few contacts between Romania and the Soviet Union. Soviets are being barred from entering that country. And I, I have no indication that the Soviets would even consider taking military action. The reaction today to the events in Panama in the Soviet Union have been completely negative. There have been official foreign ministry comments condemning the action and we've had uh, a poll recently taken uh, outside the corridors of the Congress of People's Deputies here in which we asked a number of delegates their reaction overwhelmingly negative among the comments Peter uh, Georgi Arbatov one of the senior foreign policy advisors uh, made the comment that you couldn't have done more for our military industrial complex here in the Soviet Union you preach armaments, but, uh, but here's what you do. You go ahead and, and you use your military might. It's a sad day, said one other delegate. Uh, delegate, he said, it's a return to gunboat diplomacy. We thought that era had ended. The Soviet position seems to be you cannot treat this Panama episode in isolation, that it sends signals around the world, and here in the Soviet Union, they are not well Welcome signals. It's an interesting reaction, Jim, because the early reading here, um, and I confess we were cash taken from Noriega, and the country team as well did a, a first class job. And for those who uh, are unfamiliar uh, with the complexity of an operation of this nature, uh, you ought to study it and learn from it because it was a, an amazing. Uh, amazingly well coordinated, superbly executed operation. Now, inasmuch as this is a vacation, I thought I'd take a question or two to get the year ending up in reasonably good fashion, but not too many. Oh, wait a minute, we got, we got the wires. Do I have to be on my protocol? All right, let's let's follow protocol. We have
I think that would require a lot of consultation because we don't want to do anything that even implies undermining the sovereign power of the uh, of Panama or the the uh, the uh, fact that this government is operating uh, with the trust of the people. So we'd have to nego we'd have to have some real uh, serious negotiations if it comes to that. That's not the way it appears to be leaning, but it, I, I wouldn't want to uh, go against the will of the Indira government. Here we go, UP, and then we'll get a couple of others. Can you tell us the status of the, of the efforts to break the impasse? On Just an ongoing talks, and uh, I think, the, I think the, nuncio, uh, the nuncio is awaiting instructions from the Vatican. We made clear our preference, and that is to bring the man to trial uh, and subsequently to justice uh, for, for uh, uh, on, uh, you know, to, because of this indictment that's against him. What's the yeah, uh, uh, Mr. President, a lot of people, say, lot of people think the Vatican is wrong-headed in doing it. Is the Vatican being wrong-headed not turning him over immediately? What do you think the legal issues are? How would you here? like it if people were negotiating and talking and then somebody jumped up and said they were wrong-headed, especially at this time of year, especially since it's the Vatican? <laughs> but are they? Are they being? What are the we're legal not, issues? We're not posturing ourselves as trying to be and calling people to task at this point at all. We're we're trying to solve a difficult problem here, and we're totally engaged. The Secretary of State and I'll be talking to get about it in just a few minutes more, and uh, we've we. Uh, but I'm not going to start name calling uh, at a time when we're trying to solve a very important problem for. Uh, for the United States system of justice. Leslie, uh, we'll come right across here. Uh, you just said, uh, when asked about Panama taking him, you said that's not the way it's leaning, as if it's leaning in some direction. Where is it leaning? And secondly, well, if the Vatican, the Vatican decides that it will be a third country, will we do anything to stop that? Well, uh, that's too hypothetical. And, and where it's leaning, I hope it's leaning for his being returned to the United States. But again, I, I think that the question that uh, was asked about the p officials in Panama has to very much be on our mind. Uh, and we will, uh, obviously, uh, want to see him extradited to the United States. And that may determine where, where he ends up. But look, at this point, we're still going down the road of trying to get him sent here. Charles, then, then come back here. Are, do you fear that uh, Mr. Noriega might disclose any CIA information that could embarrass you or the government? No. Nothing I, I don't think so. I think that's uh, history, and I think that that uh, main thing is that he should be tried, brought to justice, and we are pursuing that course with no fear of that. There, you know, you may get into some uh, release of certain confidential documents that he may try to blindside the whole justice process, but the system works, so I wouldn't worry about that, would, yeah. Would you open up any documents that he might request so that there'd be no question, as there has been in other cases? I, there'd be enough to see that he's given a totally fair trial, certainly, but nobody's going to, uh, well, totally to see that he gets a fair trial, yeah. How are you going to handle concerns by Latin American countries that the United States shouldn't have even gone in? Well, I think that's going to require some, uh, uh, a lot of diplomatic effort and a lot of it on my part and I've talked to many of the leaders in this hemisphere already but I think as they see a this government that was democratically elected they see it functioning they see Noriega brought to justice uh, they see that he's out of the picture none of them supported him at all they all found him outrageous uh, then I th think you begin to see uh, the problem that might have been caused by, by a prolonged conflict down there laid totally to rest. Yeah, Ann? What, have you picked up the phone and called either the papal nuncio in Panama or Pope John Paul? And if not, why not? Are you personally involved in the negotiations? I'm personally involved, but I haven't done either of those two things. Next question. Tell us what Next you have question. Done. Peru says that it won't attend the drug summit as a form of protest. Uh, what is your response to that? Are you concerned that it might compromise the effectiveness of the well, I would hope that Garcia would change his mind. Will it compromise the effectiveness of the summit? Well, in as much as Peru is an Andean country, and this is an Andean summit with the United States participating, trying to help them, uh, I would think it would be uh, less, in, you know, less uh, inclusive, obviously. But I, 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 I think that uh, um, there are ways to continue to try to help Peru in this fight.
time limit on how, how long this stalemate can go on? No, no time limit. Just like we didn't have a time set on when Nor Noriega would no longer be in the field fighting. Yeah. What's your reaction to the events in the Romania, the well, I'm just amazed and respectful of the change that has taken place. I, we did say that we were concerned that the trial of Ceausescu should have been more open, but that's their matter. They went forward, and uh, I think now uh, is to bring the remaining holdout security forces to bay. Uh, the Army seems to be doing that. And uh, my concern is for tranquility and freedom in Romania. And you know what touched me was hearing this guy singing a Christmas carol. It was reported that it was the first time uh, in public, uh, public airways uh, in some 40 years that a Christmas carol was allowed to be heard on Romanian TV. It made a dramatic statement for me, yeah. The Soviet Union seemed awfully prescient when you said that the day of the dictator is over. But I'm assuming that even you didn't anticipate these events uh, taking place in the course of this year. What are your uh, expectations and hopes for 1990 as far as... I think democracy and freedom is on the move around the world. So, uh, no, you're right. I didn't predict the rapidity of this change. I don't think anybody in the world did, but we rejoice in it. Yeah, Mike. Uh, Mr. President, uh, the President of the Vatican said this morning that could not turn Mr. Noriega over to the United States or a third country. Yet you said it doesn't seem to be leaning towards him going to the Panamanian. I mean, doesn't that statement settle it? Or is there something going on? You know, what statement, Michael? The Vatican apparently, perhaps while you were in the air, said that uh, they could not turn Noriega over to the United States or I believe any third country. Wouldn't that sound that complicates things. They said that, but I've learned not to uh, not to uh, make comment until I know exactly what was said and in what context it was placed. But we will continue to negotiate. We got time for two more right over here. Yeah, make that three. Mr. President, are you concerned that you're not sending concerned about that at all. Well, why should I be? Things have done well. It's winding down. I am in close touch by, very close touch by telephone, by secure link, and uh, Secretary of State is here, and we have some important things to go over, so it never occurred to me. Now, if the matter were still going, and there was a lot of fighting, and Noriega was not in custody, it would have been different. But I, uh, I look, I don't make any cover. I'm going to be enjoying myself. And I think the American people understand that. And I think I've worked pretty hard all year long. So uh, I'll keep on this path, and I hope it's correct. Yeah. That would concern me, yes. Unless he were in total custody and sentenced to, sentenced to the prison sentence he deserved. Last one. It's with regret that I tell you I can't hear you. Next. Last one. I don't know. I haven't heard the discussion of when that will be. They've just finished an election not many months ago. I believe it'll be certified by the Electoral Commission. And uh, I think they should have time to govern now. Thank you all. I hope you all have a marvelous time and that you, too, don't have to work every minute. I hope there's some R&R &R out there for you and relaxation. Did you hear what Senator Root? So President Bush, obviously in a very good mood as he begins his six-day hunting and fishing vacation in Texas, said that General Noriega turning himself in was a very good Christmas present to the American people. He told us that a reconstruction task force will be sent to Panama, that 40,000 weapons had been taken in Panama, and $5 million in cash had been taken from one of General Noriega's homes. He also said that a lot of consultation would be needed before General Noriega was turned over to the Americans, if, in fact, he is turned over to the Americans. John Dancy, our State Department correspondent, is standing by in Washington. John, the Vatican has said that it refuses to turn 
General Noriega, over to the United States. Can you tell us uh, what sort of negotiations are going on now and what might be needed to accomplish that? Intense negotiations have been going on, Mike, as you know, in Panama between General Thurman and other State Department officials and the Vatican uh, Papal Nuncio. Uh, uh, Mr. Bush said this morning that as far as uh, he knew, the papal nuncio was still awaiting instructions from the Vatican. Our preference, he said, of course, would be to bring Noriega to justice. But the headline, I guess, out of what the president said today is that after uh, two days of intense negotiations, there has still been no deal struck to bring uh, Noriega uh, out of the uh, papal nuncio tour in Panama City uh, to take him anywhere, either to Panama or to the United States or to some third country. Uh, the Vatican said this morning, uh, Mike, uh, according to the Vatican spokesman Joaquin Navarro Valls, that based on my knowledge, he told reporters, based on my knowledge of international law and diplomatic procedures, I cannot see any possible way that a nunciatur, that is the Vatican embassy, accredited to a certain country, in this case Panama, can hand over to another state somebody who is in it. Uh, if that were, in fact, a carefully crafted statement and not simply an offhand remark, it would seem to raise all sorts of problems for uh, dealing with the Noriega problem because, in effect, if it were a carefully crafted statement, what he is saying is, I don't know how we're going to turn him over to any third country, not just the United States, but to any third country. That would seem to rule out uh, uh, Noriega going to, uh, going to Cuba, going to India, going to Spain, any of the countries that have been speculated on as possible uh, um, uh, places where he might eventually take up refuge. It would seem to indicate that the Vatican is leaning toward turning him over to Panama. Panama, of course, does not have an extradition treaty with the United States, and in fact, the new president, Guillermo Endara, has said that he would not turn uh, Noriega over to the United States. In fact, the president said this morning, we don't want to do anything which even implies undermining the sovereign power of Panama. That is, going in and demanding that uh, Indara turn over Noriega in uh, violation of its own constitution, Mike. John, we're seeing President Bush heading off on his vacation in a helicopter, and uh, Secretary of State James Baker is with him what kind of priority is this being given in the State Department, in Washington? Are there people who are working away hard on this problem uh, as uh, the president heads off on vacation? Yes, there is a, um, there's a task force which is set up to, uh, to uh, try to uh, arrange a U.S. position to guide the negotiations. Of course, uh, it's a little more complicated, but not, uh, not measurably. Uh, by the fact that uh, Secretary of State Baker is in Houston, but of course he is in telephone contact uh, with his uh, deputies back uh, at the White House. The legal department of the, uh, uh, of the State Department is taking uh, a lead role in this, as is the, um, uh, the um, Secretary of State's undersecretary. So it is occupying a great deal of time and a great deal of effort at the uh, State Department and uh, will continue to do so for uh, the next few days, certainly. John, we have Stan Bernard, our correspondent, standing by in Rome at the Vatican. Stan, what can you tell us about the thinking in the Vatican on all of this? Well, in addition to what uh, John just told you, uh, there were meetings uh, this morning between the American ambassador to the Vatican uh, with uh, Cardinal Casseroli's representatives. He is number one behind the, the Pope, and uh, the meeting specifically with Archbishop Angelo Sedano. And uh, the U.S. notes uh, were presented again this morning in the most diplomatic language, pressing for Noriega to be turned over to the American authorities. And uh, then came the word, which John detailed uh, considerably to you, on uh, uh, that, uh, no, the, the Vatican will just not do that. They said there's no way the Vatican Nunciatore could do that under existing international law. Well, and then Joaquin de Valls, who was the chief spokesman for the, uh, the Holy Father, also said there has been no request from the Indara government for Noriega to be turned over to it, uh, nor contacts from Cuba and Nicaragua. And he said this is a dilemma, and we're trying to figure out a way to solve it. But, uh, and he did say something that was kind of optimistic, perhaps, and, and that was they expected a solution perhaps in two days, two or three days. And he said not weeks. He specified not weeks. Uh, Noriega has not been granted political asylum, as we know, and his status is that of a person who has been granted refuge, and that seems to imply uh, it's temporary. Uh, so, therefore, the optimism, at least spoken optimism at today's press conference, 
uh, at the Vatican. Hey, John Dancy, back at the uh, State Department, two or three days. Have you heard anything about that from your end of things? No, but that, uh, that certainly would be within the time frame that one could expect, uh, Mike. Um, the Indara government, um, I might add in uh, reference to what San Bernard said, the Indara government does not nor uh, want Noriega to hang around in Panama. They would like to get him out of the country, clearly, because as long as he is in Panama, he is a potential threat to the uh, security and safety of that government, which is uh, still uh, relatively weak because it's so, uh, so new. Uh, Bush said, incidentally, uh, uh, in, he was asked uh, about this uh, uh, quotation from the Vatican spokesman that they couldn't turn him over to a third country, and he said, well, that complicates matters. That uh, is perhaps understating it, but uh, it does, in fact, complicate matters for the, uh, for the White House as they try to decide what to do. Mike. Hey, John Cochran, our White House correspondent, is in Corpus Christi. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, I thought, I thought we had... John Cochran, we don't have him yet. Uh, let me get back to Stan Bernard in Rome. Uh, Stan, uh, is there anything more you can tell us about the possibility that General Noriega could be turned back over to the Panamanians and that would be a step toward his extradition to the United States? Well, one other thing that uh, they discussed, uh, I specifically asked Joaquin Navarro Valls a question about simply the, the fact of trying to get him out of uh, the Nunciatore. And uh, the statement from Secretary of Defense Cheney that uh, he would, they would be a move, a, a move against Noriega at that point, and, and uh, Joaquin Navarro Valls thought that would be, he thought that the United States would not violate international law in, in that way. Uh, they seem to be holding out a hope that somebody will extend a hand and make an offer to right, bring st him out stand and move him in, in some direction. Stan, we're going to wrap things up now. Thank you very much for your information. There'll be more on this on NBC Nightly News. I'm Mike Jensen. This has been an NBC News special report. They're finding their way back. Taking the first steps to getting back my identity. To the love they once shared. It's going to be a great New Year, Shane. And someone doesn't like it. Happy New Year. All according to plan. Tragedy at midnight on Days of Our Lives. Look for a job lately? Employers wanting experience only? Maybe it's time you look into a career as a medical assistant at the National Education Center. This phone number is a good place to start. What are you waiting for? Stop drifting. It's trouble wherever else he goes. He was asked, though, won't a trial in this country cause all kinds of trouble because Noriega would ask for secrets. And I'm going to give you another quote from Marlon Fitzwater. Noriega can talk about the CIA and George Bush until he's blue in the face. It won't hurt anything. My impression from Air Force One and from the president's news conference that negotiations are still underway and that the United States is continuing to insist that he be brought here, not sent out to a third country. And the president also said, if you heard him, that uh, the negotiations are leaning against giving him over to the Panamanian government. Dan? Leslie Stahl, uh, in Corpus Christi, traveling with the uh, vacationing uh, uh, President Bush. We're going to go now to General Frederick Werner, who until fairly recently was the commander of the U.S. Southern Command uh, in Central America. General uh, Warner is with us from San Jose, California. General, you've been watching and listening uh, as you have uh, throughout as uh, our CBS News military consultant. Give us some perspective, some context on what appears to be happening. It seems to me that the president uh, can declare victory on his fundamental objective uh, of uh, removing Noriega from power. The fact that he is, has not been apprehended does not deny uh, or reduce uh, the significance of the success. I think now uh, is the time to begin to focus uh, quite deliberately on the reconstruction effort, that other objective of the president, uh, to build democracy in Panama. Thank you, General Warner. Well, President Bush has arrived uh, for the Texas uh, hunting leg of his vacation. He said uh, in a statement today that, uh, in effect, he thought the mop-up operation in Panama was going well. The president also said that talks are continuing on the situation of General uh, Noriega. Noriega remains inside uh, the Vatican Embassy in Panama. President Bush said that he 
hopes the talks are leaning toward Noriega being returned to the United States, uh, where Noriega, of course, has been indicted on drug charges. This despite a statement by the Vatican today that it sees no way of turning Noriega over to the United States. And in the background, there's a, a report to CBS News that at least uh, high sources in the Vatican believe that an understanding has been formed in which Noriega will not be turned over to the United States, but he will be turned over to someone somewhere in which he will, in effect, be held while an effort is made to hold him to, uh, to account. Uh, the, the lean seems to be toward either a third country or turning over the Panamanian government. Nobody says that a deal has been reached. The most that has been reached is a kind of understanding that possibly this will be worked out. Now, this completes our CBS News coverage of the President's arrival in Texas, his statement, and his uh, brief question and answer session. Uh, when news breaks out in Panama, Romania, or any place else, you'll hear it on this CBS station. Of course, we'll have full details tonight on the CBS Evening News. We'll see you again as we go along. Dan Rather in New York. This has been a CBS News special report. This is CBS. I just can't wait to lose 80 pounds. There's something special about Nutrisystem. My goal? 28 pounds. That makes people excited about losing weight because without taking any longer, the new Body Breakthrough Activity Plan will help you lose up to 25% more weight. Now I'm gonna... There wasn't really a plan or that he knew of, uh, some kind of contingency plan to protect these people, which does seem quite unusual. Hmm. All right, Catherine Kirk, we'll be getting back to you also. Thanks very much. Let's go on over to Deborah Norville right now. Well, there may be no answers coming from the Pentagon as to how some of these happened or how some of these apparent omissions uh, were created, but maybe there's some answers at the White House. Jim Koshesky is standing by there. He's been there since the early hours of the morning. Um, this is nothing new to the Bush administration, the fact that uh, Americans are, are, are at the Marriott Hotel, the fact that it would be a natural target as it has been in the past. Why were no precautions taken? Why were no steps implemented? Why specifically the military didn't take those precautions, uh, I haven't gotten that answer here, Deborah. But, you know, whenever the U.S. enters into a military action like this, uh, the president, before him President Reagan, now President Bush, feels he needs U.S. public support to take that action. What better motive for Americans to support than for the U.S. military to be protecting American lives. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll remember that was the reason that President Reagan cited for going into Grenada in 1983 sure. to rescue those medical students, when in fact, what we wanted to do, the United States wanted to do, was rid Grenada of that communist-leaning government and shut down that airstrip, which the U.S. felt could have been used by uh, the communists. Right, and I think if you go through those four objectives that uh, President Bush outlined this morning, um, while safeguarding the, uh, the Americans, the 35,000 Americans who are in Panama is indeed one of them, uh, also on that list is apprehending Manuel Noriega, and that is probably in reverse order. Right, and no matter what, the, uh, what, what items are on the list, Ousting Noriega was the number one priority of this administration. And, uh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, there, there is always a risk, and, and it certainly seems to be evident this morning. Anytime you take any kind of, of military action in particular, um, people are going to second-guess your, your decision. Uh, given that fact, shouldn't the United States have had better intelligence? They've acknowledged all along it's been difficult to get information from Panama, but it would seem that... Uh, that that they didn't have a clue where Noriega was based on what we heard just a moment ago, that he could have been on the, the Atlantic side, he could have been on the Pacific side. It was a, it was a coin toss, maybe. Well, but as we heard from Noriega's uh, supporters this morning, the U.S. clearly telegraphed its punch. Uh, after Noriega made this declaration of war last Friday, the rest American citizens in Panama and to bring General Noriega to justice in the United States. Let us, uh, now that we feel uh, not uh, comfortable, but better able to report that one of the two Americans, uh, actually the two Americans who have been taken from the hotel a short while ago, are both uh, television producers, John Meyerson, who works for CBS, and Robert Campos, who works for ABC, along with John Quinones. Let's go back to the hotel now and ask uh, John Quinones if you can give us some more details, John, of what happened. John Quinones? I'm sorry, Peter, I, I did not hear that. I'm sorry. I, could I ask you if you could give us a few more details of what happened to Bob Campos and John Meyerson? They were downstairs in the lobby. They just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. We were uh, 
trying to, uh, to dis we were discussing feeding videotape out of Panama back to New York. Uh, we just got our satellite up, as your video shows, and uh, they were uh, about to leave the hotel uh, to feed that vid more videotape to New York. Suddenly, uh, a truckload of about four or five of these men uh, showed up fully armed. They, uh, they were shouting that uh, too many uh, Panamanians have been innocently uh, killed by Americans, and they just wanted to, uh, they, they wanted to take more Americans out of here, clearly. Uh, there is a great deal of anger here that, uh, that this hotel, such a prime target, for these battalions is uh, so poorly protected. Uh, we have not seen it, any American troops uh, within blocks of the Marriott. Well, that's ex precisely the point I wanted to try to establish because John McCrethy was under the impression in Washington that because the Marines had been landed in your general vicinity, some of them clearly, if we can look at the map, clearly on their way to the American Embassy, which is about a mile from where you are, we're going to take up positions around the Marriott Hotel. How many foreigners are there in there? And is there nobody around the hotel at the moment? There's about 200 of us here, and uh, no. The only, the only, uh, the only armed men we see around the hotel are, are those uh, members of the Dignity Battalion, and there, there are uh, they, throughout the the, uh, the neighborhood, uh, driving by and then uh, uh, breaking, uh, breaking into the hotel lobby and then uh, and then leaving just as quickly as they arrived. So, response from the administration was well, they treated it with uh, uh, humor actually. Uh, there was somewhat of a humorous response here. One official at the White House called uh, Noriega and Panama the mouse that roared, for example. Uh, then suddenly... It's for the purpose of getting him some sleep. He has only one event on his public schedule that uh, is going to be held, and that's a photograph, I think, not a photo opportunity with uh, uh, some aid to Poland uh, group. And the rest of the time, I think he'll be standing by awaiting word from uh, from Panama on what is uh, on what is happening there. Uh, as we've talked about earlier in political terms, it does strike me that uh, if the overall assessment that was given us this morning by General Powell uh, holds up, that uh, he's not going to be in much in, in very great difficulty. The question, of course, is will it hold up? The overall assessment, of course, being clouded at the moment by this, uh, by this uh, taking of Americans uh, by independent members of, of the, uh, the brigades. Um, is there a sense anywhere that you can tell that this is the kind of thing that would compromise the whole operation? Doesn't sound like it, does it? It doesn't, uh, Peter, and you'll recall, I'm sure that uh, General Powell was asked about this whole matter of hostages, and he said that they were doing everything they could, everything they could to chase that down. And if I'm not mistaken, he also said that he felt that we had sufficient force present to deal with that. And it appears from all accounts that we certainly do have sufficient force, uh, roughly triple, at least triple, the number of uh, soldiers on the ground that the, that the PDF could mount. I can't imagine that this, uh, that this, uh, the, these uh, uh, Dignity Battalion uh, uh, figures amount to very many people. Okay. Britt, thanks very much indeed. Uh, Britt Hume, John McCarthy in Washington. Just to uh, briefly review, we do not know where General... Now, somebody wishes to speak to me in my ear, so go ahead. Okay, what we can do is now go back and review uh, a portion of the President's not very extensive remarks he made from the Oval Office uh, today about his assessment of the operation as he saw it about an hour and a half ago. That was enough. General Noriega's reckless threats and attacks upon Americans in Panama created an imminent danger to the 35,000 American citizens in Panama. As president, I have no higher obligation than to safeguard the lives of American citizens. And that is why I directed our armed forces to protect the lives of America. Uh, at least 50 Panamanians are known to be dead. The toll among Panamanians is, uh, is widely believed to be much higher than that. Noriega himself, hunted, remains on the loose. Um, uh, U.S. officials have said that while they believe that Noriega is still inside the country, that they can't be certain of that. Correspondent David Martin is uh, at the Pentagon. David? Dan, watching those uh, pictures with you, uh, they look like troop-carrying helicopters to me, too, although I'm watching on a, on a very small monitor. Um, <clears throat> and the, uh, the planes looked like C-130 transports. We're still trying to uh, come to grips with this. Uh, just a minute. I, somebody's knocking at the door here. Hold That's on. That's all right, Ed. All right. 
Uh, we're back. I'm surprised you answered it. <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, hi. All right. We're uh, we're still trying to make a, a judgment here, so uh, okay. uh, we understand that those uh, forces have uh, left the hotel, but we're trying to confirm that before we uh, are there around. Us. We'll let you go ahead and take care of business, and we'll talk a little bit here. I agree with you, Tom. I mean, I, I, go ahead back to your point. Which well, you, my, which my, my point sorry. is that it, uh, it should not come as a rocket to anyone who's been following even casually what has been going on in Panama. It was from that hotel that American journalists were dragged earlier in the year in may when the elections were going on it is the central place for westerners and journalists gathered i'm not talking just about the journalists who are there but US all the westerners who are like there us. that you would think that that would be a primary objective and the fact of the matter is that we've been broadcasting for uh now about uh, 10 hours about nine hours on the situation the marriott marriott hotel has been a target uh, almost every hour during that time people have been dragged from their rooms still no Mar american military presence around them so it seems to me that there are two fairly not just fairly there are two significant okay. intelligence failures here noriega where was he and secondly what about that hotel which if we're in there to protect american interest the United States is. There are a lot of Americans there, and they're at great risk, and some of them are being dragged from the hotel right now. I just think it's inexcusable. Katie, are you still with us? Right. You've been listening to that. Comment? Well, I was just going to say that I think that uh, Tom is right. There are going to be two major areas of criticism, and the fact that this fairly high-ranking Pentagon official had no explanation for this means that... ...we have had of uh, the U.S. military operation, this particular scene, uh, this is uh, U.S. troops landing at Old Panama. Difficult to tell whether they're Army or Marines uh, landing at uh, that Old Panama. You can see smoke in the distance. This was just a few hours ago. And this was about uh, two hours ago, Juan Vasquez says. Daylight came and uh, American troops securing uh, roads and bridges. Well, Panama is a, a small country, and uh, Panama City is a comparatively uh, a small city by uh, um, world standards. I want to keep in mind of, of what a, a difficult and very large operation this is. Helicopters uh, just at dawn, as you can see. The U.S. attack uh, began at about midnight uh, last night, Eastern Time. Uh, early elements of the attack started much earlier than that, but the uh, official Mark time for the attack was 1 a.m. Eastern uh, time. The heaviest fighting apparently occurred between 1 and 4 a.m. U.S. time. These pictures taken as uh, daylight came. And uh, those particular helicopters appear to be uh, troop-carrying helicopters. This was in the vicinity. This was on the eastern side of the city, on the vicinity of the Marriott Hotel. And now this is in, excuse me, Dan. Please, Juan, go ahead. This is, that was in the general area of, uh, now, apparently we've lost the picture, but the last pictures we saw were Americans moving into the general area of one of the Panamanian military installations located uh, in the eastern side of the city between the Marriott and the International Airport. Well, Juan, uh, we may get some more uh, pictures as we are giving our uh, viewers here the, uh, the, the, the raw videotape, raw in the sense that it hasn't been edited as we're able to get it up uh, from the satellite station uh, there in Panama. Now, to review where we are, what we know, what we don't know, what's going on, the preliminary casualty toll, and everyone emphasizes it's early, can be expected to rise, perhaps uh, go up quite a bit, uh, in the U.S. military attack on Manuel Noriega is nine American uh, military personnel killed in action, 39 uh, wounded, one missing.